Now, the modified Thomas test, uh, we have the patient lie down, but at this time not at the end of the table, but at the edge of the side of the table. So the patient lies down, and what I do is I bring the patient's tested side completely off the table. So I have the ASIS and the acetabulum of the tested side off the table. Of course, as you can see, I support the patient's body with my hip and my leg so that the patient feels secure in this position. Then I bring the leg under testing off the table and then I flex the contralateral hip and knee and the patient helps me with that. Now this is what I am assessing. I am assessing extension or lack of extension of the hip joint and uh, um, now because I do not have the um, blocking of the acetabulum and ischial tuberosity from the table, I can assess the full flexibility of the joint. So a test where the hip is below the table, the leg will be below the table, that would be a negative test. Now once this knee starts coming slightly up and being at level or slightly above the table, I call that an one plus. If it is further up, a two plus, and even further up in very severe cases, a two plus, a three plus. Now, what I would like to <clears throat> further explain is that when we perform this testing with the knee flexed, I am assessing simultaneously any tightness or contracture of both the iliopsoas muscle as well as the rectus femoris muscle. Remember, the rectus femoris is a two-joint muscle. Starts from the ASIS and attaches all the way down into the uh, supravatellar ligament. Now, what I do with this test is that if I want to eliminate the effect of the rectus femoris, I extend the knee and I see if that changes the amount of hip extension I get. Because by extending the knee, I eliminate the action of the rectus femoris. Of course, I ask the patient to relax it. I do the knee extension and I reassess how far further down that can go. Now, if I eliminate the action of the rectus femoris and whatever limitation I have in this position is limitation that comes predominantly from the iliopsoas muscle. When I flex the knee, then whatever limitation of the hip extension exists, that is a combined limitation of the iliopsoas and the rectus femoris muscle. So this is how I use this test to help me differentiate um, whether the iliopsoas or the rectus femoris are more responsible for the limitation of hip extension.